Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Easy Speeds and Feeds, and today I'll show you how to do some five axis planes and surfacing. So let's get started. So here is our part in a fifth axis self centering vise. I imported that so we could use it for our verify and what we want to do is add planes on both those sides so we can do that hole going through and those fillets. So we go to planes, add plane from solid face, and then we just click on the face we want to machine. And here we want to get our X, Y, Z oriented correctly. So for my machine it's 90 degrees and 90 degrees. So your Z needs to move 90 and your X needs to move 90. Just like that. We'll call it plane 101. Meaning op 1 um, and then the second plane from 100. Or the first rotation. And then we go onto both planes and work offset we set to zero. If it's not set to zero, 100 will be G54 and 101 will be G55. If you set it to zero they'll both be G54. That's just how Mastercam spits out the code. So we repeat this process We get our X, Y, and Z set correctly, and this will be 102 for second rotation. We also go to manual and set that to zero. So that's very important. That's kind of like your base. So your planes are set correctly. They're all spit out of G54. That's step one. Now, it's not quite finished yet. There's still some semi-complicated things we need to do in order to get tool paths and rotations. So, I think what we should do first is probably machine it three axis style before we do any rotation. So, that's what I like to do. Keep it simple. And I'm just going to do these fillets. Flow line. We're going to change the direction. Okay. And what we want to do is we want to find a tool with a radius on it. So filter, click on none, then click on one with a fillet, and let's find a half inch with a 30 thou rad. Okay, click edit tool. And now we'll call it tool one. And now we need speeds and feeds. We don't skip this part ever. So we'll, just, we'll go to easyspeedsandfeeds.com. We'll go to aluminum. And we'll just calculate something out real quick. Tool, half inch diameter. 7,600 surface feet. Inch per tooth. We'll go 4 thou. So we'll throw that info in there. And now we'll go over to finish flow and parameters, click on distance, we'll go 3 thou, meaning every time it cuts that fillet, the tool will just move 3 thou. Then we'll also change it to tangential line length to 0.4 meaning it'll go 0 0.4 inches past so it'll make sure to clean up that entire surface. Go back to easyspeedsandfeeds.com, click on milling, personal, click on add. And what we want to do is we just want to type in this new um, speed and feed we just calculated so we never have to calculate it again. We can just go back into our own personal database and um, just find it. It's a lot faster 
and we can type in all the info. So we can type in the three tab flow line. We can type in speed, the feed, size of the tool, everything. So if if you find a special speed and feed combo that you like, but you think you won't be using um, for a while, but you know it's important, you can type it in here. You can save it for later. So special tools, um, boring heads, um, just like everything. It's a uh, it's like your own little personal database. So if you log in to this website, you get one of these for free and you get uh, 50 slots with it. So we'll type in 31 now radius, three flu end mill. We'll just give a short little description of what we're using it for. Type in the material, click submit. Now you can edit all these. So you can go back and change them and you know do whatever you want. But eventually you want to build like a massive like 50 tool library of all your favorite speeds and feeds. So if you come back six months later and you're machining that crazy ink canal part again. You know exactly how fast you're running, your step overs, your depths of cuts, the tool number, you know, everything you need to know. So we'll run a back plot real quick. And it looks like it's taking a 3,000 step over, going 400,000 past. And that looks good to me. So that's done. Now we want to do some, some five axis stuff. So we're going to rotate the part and what we want to do first is make that hole now everything's the same as if you're doing a three axis you just select your geometry create a tool generate the toolpath but when we get to the planes you have to do some some different stuff so we will just find a tool here One inch three sixteenths, that works. Now we edit our tool, like always. Type in 1,000 surface feet, three teeth. Now that's pretty quick, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it a really light helix when it's going through the part, so it's not gonna overload this tool because this tool is a little bit long. See if we do a 10 thou helix, so 10 thou down per revolution around the hole, this tool is barely going to feel it. It won't bend. So we're at planes. Work coordinate system needs to be 100 because that's what we touched off. Tool plane and comp construction plane needs to be 101 because that's the side we're machining. So right here we're just setting up our depth. We'll change everything to absolute. Click the check. And so it's not going all the way through yet. Back into parameters. So that all looks right except depth. 
and we just go back here and we see that we typed in the wrong number type in 3.1 regen and it's doing a nice helix all the way through that part so now we'll do a quick verify of what we got going on and then after this verify we will do some more surfacing Okay, so first it's going to do um, that surfacing, let it play, and as you see, it's doing a 3 thou step over, going 400 thou pass, and it'll leave us a real nice finish. And here's that tool. It's doing so many passes, it can't even show, but as you can see, it's, it's slowly working its way through the part. 10,000 per revolution around. And on those helix boards, I like to keep the uh, the uh, the step down um, or the helix, whatever you want to call it. I like to keep it light because if you take like a heavy one, the tool begins to uh, bend and make a lot of noise and will chatter. And our finish pass is a steeper angle. Okay, so that looks good. Now we want to finish thing, this thing up with a little bit more surfacing. So I use flow line for most things. Make sure the angle is correct. Now we have that tool with our speeds and feeds already set. We can go from zigzag, we'll go to spiral, since it's kind of circular. Planes, we use 100 and 101. All that's telling you to do is use that touch off plane, that 100, and then with 101 selected also, it's telling it to, to move to plane 101. It has no idea how to get to 101 without 100 being your first, the first column work coordinate system. You need both. So right now it's just generating a toolpath. It's taking a while. Okay, sweet. So there's our tool path. It didn't generate a perfect one, but it's good enough just for this demonstration. And we can copy it and paste it. And then we can change the geometry. Select the other side. And we will change it to 101. So work coordinate system 100, rotation 1, and then we can generate it. It's taking a minute. And that's really kind of the basics of 5-axis is you need to have your kind of master plane like you do in like a normal 3-axis part but you need to have 
your other planes and make sure that in the toolpath parameters that you have them both selected correctly. And then also that in the planes you switch them to manual and zero. So they're all G54. Okay, that looks like it made it. Generated the toolpath again, not perfect. It's doing kind of something funky at the top, but I'm trying to keep this video short, so we'll just do a quick little verify. Doing that helix through. And now it's doing that flow line on those fillets on either side. Looks like that's correct. And that is our five axis and surfacing video. It's uh, just the basics kind of went over a lot so feel free to rewind and rewatch this and uh, subscribe for more thanks